kicks ass, not just Naruto. Giant sand barrier! Uh, I love all the call-outs for the attacks. But Thunder! Rising Thunder! It's like they're all amusement theme rides, you know? Thunder Steamer! Okay, this is a kind of a big deal. You know, Naruto, it's like everywhere. Everybody knows about it. I'm kind of used to the fever, although would have thought it would have died down a little, and it surely hasn't. All of the ninjutsu is amazing. It's just so much fun to watch. It's hard to put into words because it's so huge. It's like, it's insane. I can see why it's so popular. There's there's great stories behind all of them. That's to me. That's the baseline. You got to have a great story. Most of our fans know uh, about the origins of Naruto. Of course, it uh, originated as a manga. The manga was created by uh, Kishimoto Sensei, a fabulous talent. He has created a an amazing story that has now been very popular in Japan for years. And so it, it was gathering steam, and it was building, building up, and then so it, it had a fan base here. When I first watched uh, my first episode of Naruto, or my first bunch of episodes of Naruto, I definitely said, wow, this is something special. This is something that can translate into English. These are just fantastic stories, and they could be told in any language and come across fabulous. People were really hungering for it to, uh, to come stateside, and when it did, people were just like, wow. It started out as a manga, it was developed into animation, and now theatrical movies. Uh, so the saga continues. It's, uh, I think uh, our audiences here have a lot to look forward to. Everybody's watching this, and I think it's because Naruto has something for everyone. There are so many characters, you're bound to find one that you relate to. I think people love Naruto because he is hyper... What you say and do are two different things! Excitable. Hey! I'm talking to you! Knucklehead ninja tendencies. <laughs> hey! I'm talking to you! It's kind of fun to live out your fantasy through, you know, ninja supply. Basically, I don't need therapy anymore. He's so passionate. He's so loyal to the people he knows. Let her go, pal! Just you and me! Naruto! You jerk! Put me down right now! Sakura, Sakura, Sakura. Sakura is a wonderful character. <laughs> She has a love-hate relationship with Naruto. The thing is, what she knows is that Naruto will not let her down, no matter how hard she is on him. Naruto, stop antagonizing him! He's still there for her, and deep inside, she is still there for him as well. Naruto! If you lose him, I'll be you senseless! She really says what's on her mind. And I don't care about you! If she's sick of him, she's like, you idiot! Idiot! What are you doing, you idiot? I say that a lot. She's got her inner Sakura, the inner Sakura that does the whole cha! Oh yeah! I love when I see lines and just let it all out and scream. That's right over there that this bridge is dangerous! I mean, that feels good to do, you know? Idiot! This is a new trio because in this film, it, on this mission, it is Naruto, Sakura, and Shikamaru who are, are moving forward. I don't know, something feels kind of strange here. Shikamaru's a genius, super genius. I need to check something out. He's the major strategist that is so reluctant to be the genius that he is. I'll take the woods to the west. You two head over to the opposite end, all right? It used to bug me because you used to call him the lazy ninja. We could sure use a ninja out right now. Because it's not like he's lazy. He's so bored by it. I hope this doesn't turn out to be a drag. Shikamaru's main ability is the Shadow Possession Jutsu. Shadow Possession complete. He can basically stop an enemy using shadows. He controls them and then basically they're locked. <laughs> it's a good way for them to time up and win. <laughs> no, I can handle it. Gara is an extremely popular character. Gara probably scares the crap out of me the most. So, <laughs> When Gara shows up, you know, something interesting is going to happen. Billowing sand tsunami! He's a ninja from the sand. He started out as kind of a bad egg. In this film, he's actually battling with Naruto and Shikamaru and Sakura, looking for the same end. So who are we dealing with? Gara actually 
flip-flops or turns and uh, is rehabilitated from his murderous demonic little, little guy so not so fast nice of you to finally show up Kagero is Gara's brother who comes in and kicks as much butt as Gara does. Oh man, you didn't know about this? Secret black move, Iron Maiden 2. Gotcha. He controls an evil puppet. <laughs> and he can control it to do whatever he wants. Let me out! You know, to have, you know, a Muppet that can kick ass. I think that's, you know, that's far better. Really? Our heroes kind of stumble across kind of a contemporary of Naruto's. Temujin is his name. So you're the leader then, huh? I already told you, didn't I? If one hopes to achieve a higher goal, certain sacrifices must be made. My character basically derives all of his power from the Stone of gil -El. I know more about the stones than anybody. The stone basically gives him the strength to do all this interesting stuff. My favorite line of the movie so far, um, there's this one scene where Tim and Jean, I think he looks right at the camera and says, it's brilliant, it's amazing, it's very moving. I think that was uh, my favorite so far. <laughs> Temujin travels with this uh, guy, Haido. He tells me he possess quite an interesting power. Haido is a very interesting guy. Those who stand at the top have to make such tough decisions. He comes off in the beginning as being very fatherly and very caring. Resorting to violence is never the answer, my son. And we find that maybe Temujin and Haido are not all that they presented themselves to be. I'm the elder of this caravan. The name's Kaki. Kahiko actually first appears to be kind of just quirky and eccentric and like, oh, he's just an old man. The truth is, I'm actually the one who hired the village hidden in the leaves to find him. I think one of the funniest scenes I like in is sort of when Naruto and Temujin kind of wake up from their battle. It's all bandaged up and then Kahiko gives him a nice smack on the back. It's good to see you've got your energy back, son. Why are you not? But uh, he sees much more than that. There, there is definitely a, a, a turning point for this character. You're going to tell me where the mines of Galel are hidden. I will not. People fought and quarreled shamelessly over the stones. He holds the key to what the uh, villain wants in this whole adventure. Where's the stone? What makes you think I know anything about that? Are you playing dumb with me? <laughs> There are three female henchmen for Master Haido, and that's Fugai. She turns into a wolf. What in the... Fugai is very kick butt. I mean, she is a tough cookie. <laughs> then we've got uh, Ramke, who masters electricity. What's the matter? Don't you want to play? She also turns into sort of this giant bohemoth sort of thing. You got it! <laughs> This, my character, Ronke, had some very awesome, sinister, evil cackles. <laughs> I'm not through with you yet. Well, that takes care of that. And then Kamira is sort of that. I don't believe it. No! Kill you! The girls who come after uh, Sakura and Shikamaru and Naruto, and I love those battles. You fellas should learn when to walk away. How vicious they are as they come after our heroes and what they have to deal with. I'll see you on the other side. Uh, I just like seeing the little side battles going on around everybody. <laughs> nice, my friend. The <laughs> hide and seek game that Sakura plays. Where could you be? Sh I, I love Shikamaru in this, uh, in this movie. It's totally cool. Moment with this fight again where he puts all the tags all over the cave. Okay. You probably shouldn't move around too much, you know? And they're just like grocery receipts faking around. You know, all these exploding tags of yours are gonna be a real pain to get around. Don't worry. Most of these are just regular old pieces of paper. Really? I'm just such a huge fan of fight sequences. I, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> it's not just Naruto fighting, you have of Shikamaru fighting, and then you also have Kankuro and Gara, and when they fight, it's just really exciting. I 
I think one of my favorite fighting sequences, Gara fights this young woman named Ronke. Just the physics of that one particular fight is pretty amazing. Tornado lightning! Tornado lightning! She's using her electrical powers, and he's using his sand powers. And uh, sand apparently eventually beats lightning. <laughs> There's some really cool effects on this. They they can't really go into on the, the TV show. And you have a little bit more freedom. You have a little bit more freedom of expression. You can take the character a little farther than you would in the confines of the show. It's just fun. It's it, I, th This was a blast. These people invaded the land of wind from out of nowhere. Are you serious? We've had quite a few casualties trying to stop their rampage. Whole villages were wiped out in the battle. Anime kind of goes places that aren't as compact and saccharine and sweet as other cartoons. They're not afraid of sort of real emotions, and it's not like, oh, at the end of the movie, the princess always gets the guy. You know, the end of anime, the princess might die. People gave their lives for your dream. Do you even care? You take this show, and people get hurt, and people die. There's a weight to that, there's a seriousness, there's a you know, kind of a darkness to it. And again, they play the realness of that teenage angst. What you say and do are two different things! It's life, I mean, life's that way. It's, 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 the pendulum swings from extreme to extreme. I don't ever back down! Now get on your feet and help! I think the stories are really good and the characters are really well developed so people really can relate to the characters. It's the dynamic range of the entire series of the characters. They go from being incredibly silly and stupid, especially Naruto, basically sacrificing themselves or putting their lives on the line for what they believe. Here's this kid and he's just like this precocious kid and he's like and he's a ninja and like a kid as a ninja and those two things on the US shores had never really reared itself and so that kind of thing it was exciting. <laughs> Look around you, aren't these your friends lying here? They are. And like me, they were willing to give everything. The storyline and just like the animation itself, it was unlike anything that had really come out before. People were just like, wow, they were just really amazed with it. The writing is great. The animation looks terrific. I love it. shows off some of his awesome jutsu. So you can increase your strength by altering the structure of your body. Ooh, here comes Gara. Actually, I'm Gara. I'm Gara. I'm Gara. Want to see my gourd? I'm Gara. I know what's wrong. <laughs> I'm Gara. I'm Gara. Why is no Okage in this movie? What does your Gara then? I'm Gara. Creepy enough? I'm Gara. Why isn't Orochimaru in this movie? I always get shut out. This be Gara. Yo soy Gara. Hey, Thank you so much. So much. Just the most amazing group of actors to um, bring Naruto to life here in the States. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm a celebrity looper. <laughs> when we heard the voice, we were like, wow. This is it. This is Naruto. If I talk like Naruto all the time, someone should put me in a mental institution. I think all of our actors are hysterically funny. Our egos have driven us into a small booth behind a microphone. This job is kind of my dream job. How awesome is the job where you get to watch anime all day? You can't beat that? It's a great way to make a living. Beats flipping burgers. Am I getting paid? Japanese film and basically adapting it for an English-speaking audience is a pretty tricky process. It's it's impressive to see how uh, it goes from what it originally was to what it is for, say, an English-speaking audience. When this media acquires uh, the Naruto films, we, of course, um, receive films that are completed, uh, but they're in Japanese. 
So what we have to do is then start the process of uh, localizing or reversioning uh, the Japanese content uh, for an American audience. It takes about six months from receiving the Japanese original movie to release the movie in English in the United States. So from Japanese we translate into English. Um, that is our direct translation script, as we call it, our DT script. Uh, then what we have to do is begin the adaptation process. Script adaptation is, is a step in the process that gets so overlooked. The strict translation doesn't necessarily work, but it, you can't stray from that either. It's, it's, really, it's really a tough, it's really craftsmanship. And it's really exciting to see what the changes are and what we need to do to make it work, and, and also to stay true to the original. We have bilingual people um, at Biz as a part of our production team. They carefully review the direct translation to make sure that it is accurate. I'll usually watch the content in Japanese while reading the script in English and making little adjustments to make sure it's consistent to story. There's all kinds of philosophy, the Japanese folktale and everything else that's thrown out. We don't have any reference for that in our society or in our culture, so sometimes that can be difficult. Some things just can't be translated. The entire best. <laughs> Through our studio in Los Angeles, um, we hire um, one of our, our top writers to adapt the script into English for recording purposes. You have a translation, and it uh, it tells you basically what's going on. Uh, you know, some are better than others, but it'll tell you exactly what it is, a literal translation. Sometimes they'll put a little bit of spice into the translation to give you a vibe for what's happening. You as a writer have to log the exact frame where a character starts to open their mouth and then take the rough translated script from Japanese and make it into conversational and fit the flaps. So you literally have to stare at the lines and shuttle things over and maybe if I put fist here and sword, no, that doesn't work and literally I spend, you know, a long time with each line just trying to different variations and, and acting it out, you know, for every single line of the whole movie on my own. I'm not sure. Liam's also very familiar with all the actors who are playing all the roles, so he knows the rhythm of all the different actors because the rhythm of every character is different. Just you and me! Narco's gonna be a little punchier and a little brassier, and Sakura's a little more gentle, and Shikamaru has got a very draggy, lazy style. It's just each character has their own thing. I hope you know what you're getting into. Well, I can handle it. Come. Somebody like Kankuro is kind of like a little bit slow. So you can get fewer syllables into a line. A secret black move Iron Maiden 2. Gotcha. So, you know, if there are four flaps, he's not going, you know, I'm thinking about wearing pants. You know that's probably not going to work. Really? Once the script has been approved, then it moves on to the next step, which is the acting, the voice actors. This is going to be good. <laughs> okay, that's done. Well, it looks like we've bagged our animal. Giving you great stuff here. <laughs> are you ready to talk yet or what? That sounds really weird. When I hear a voice that really personifies a character, I know it. And luckily for me, they thought that I did the right job with Naruto's voice. Are you serious? And then, of course, once I started doing it, I heard the Japanese actress's voice all the time, and she's great. I, I love her voice. Actoring. I'm actoring. Here he goes to Meili Flanagan. Flanagan. For Naruto. I guess it must be shocking the first time you see her. I mean, here's this petite Irish woman who's like, hey, how are you? Yeah, you know, I mean, not that she talks that way, but she does sometimes. No one else has a voice like her. What is all this? She is not a doll. You dare put me down right now! It's early in the morning. Kate's been doing the voice since Naruto first started. We we heard that voice in the audition, like, wow, this really, this really hits the character. Quit your complaining, will ya? A mission's a mission. Besides, the hard part's over. Now we just have to deliver him to his owner. Ugh. Hey, I get to talk some more. <laughs> Tom's great, and Kashikamaru is one of my favorite characters. Look, I know it's nothing to do with us. I'm just a little curious is all. 
They were talking about it back in their stronghold. I voice uh, Gara of the Desert. Sand Lightning Rod. Sand Burial. Pantherol? You got it. Pantherol. He's, uh, he's cool. Oh, man. You didn't know about this? In the movies, we have uh, new characters that don't appear in the TV series, so we are casting uh, new people uh, for roles in the film. It was given to me by my master, Haido. Noble sacrifices for the greater good. When we first heard Roger's audition, we really felt he would fit the character of Temujin perfectly. I know. It's weird. It's weird. good casting. Yeah. <laughs> Temujin. I'm very disappointed in you. Dulles' voice is great because you're able to hear both sides. You hear the kindness and gentility of Haido, and then you hear the evil intentions behind it, and it's just like, the contrast is amazing. Now the entire world will fall to its knees before me. <laughs> you have to figure out a way to stop him. Kahiko, yes, he is the leader of this, uh, Caravan. He starts as sort of a very goofy comedic character. If I'm an old man, I just add a little Catherine Hepburn in there and keep the rasp and then age him up. Quiet! I told you to deliver him to the next village! How on earth could this have happened? Old people are funny. That might. <laughs> One thing about working on a movie like Naruto that's already been done in Japan and is coming over to the States, the, the plus and the minus of that is that you, you have to go into the studio and there is a technique to everything that you're doing because you're having to dub a pre-existing picture uh, into English. Tell me, Jean, what are you just standing there for? Are you going to kill them or not? Nice it's all about timing and tempo, but without sounding like an automaton or a robot. So it's got to go, pause, 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 pause. And again, it's about trying to pause without sounding like bad Shatner. And you want to sound like good Shatner. Does it this. Anime dubbing is actually the hardest kind of voice work there is to do. If you're new to it, it can be daunting. I think the hardest challenge was um, probably learning how to do the lip flaps and get the emotion in there, the lips making the proper movement. <laughs> Third time's the charm. You know, the first sessions were much slower than they are now. I mean, now it's like bing, bing, bing. The sessions roll really fast. We're always on a tight time schedule to get these out, and uh, so we're always moving at a pretty good clip. When you step into that recording booth and you see the session, you see the scene queued up to each line, it's the first time you're seeing it literally, so it's given that you're going to blow a few takes. Naruto, stop antagonizing me! Dave didn't like it, that's why we're doing it again. He had to stop. Yeah. He wanted to critique. No, this is bad. The big thing about acting is usually you're on stage or on camera and you've memorized your lines. Well, in voiceover, you don't have to. It helps if you're able to glance at the script and then so you can totally focus on the monitor as you're in the booth watching. The scripts are long. They're very, very long. You've got one eye looking at the screen and one eye looking there. Thank you know, I can do this. So I can kind of split it. I typically use peripheral vision. So the music stand is pulled as high as it'll go. I'm looking up just barely so I can see the lip flap out of the corner of my eye and I kind of use that as a guide. Yes. What was the point of spending all that money on the unparalleled Shinobi of the Leaf Village? Hold on a second. I think you can really stretch that. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. Some... Master Haido? Haido. Haido. So, who is this Master Haido guy? I, I like to think of myself as a fairly intelligent person, but they throw these names at you that it literally can take you seven or eight takes just to try to pronounce them. It, it's crazy. That's not his name, Dave. His name is Kimuji. No, Kimuji. 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 Thing you call everyone Conrad from here on out. Oh. It's just That'd be easier than all the Japanese names. When I first started working, I did the, the, the major no-no, which was to refer to as Naruto, which I learned is wrong. It's Naruto. It's very important stuff for, for me to learn so I don't uh, irritate everyone out there. Pronunciation? You were using Oh, yes. Anything else? I, for one, apologize in advance for for any 
really terrible uh, Japanese butchery that I may do in my pronunciation. And is it Jalel? Gelo. Gelel. Do you think you could tell us where the mines of Gelel are lo located? What is the stone of Jalel? Uh, 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 uh. Gelel. Gelel? Gelel. 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 Uh -huh. Oh my god. The stone of Gelel. Gelel. What is the stone of Gelel? Brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> There's some loops you just want over. <laughs> G E F E M. Quiet exhale as she peers over a tree branch. Uh. Uh. Everybody in anime reacts to everything. There's a lot of reacting. Uh. <laughs> if you do different vowel sounds, sure, if you go, uh, uh, oh, you've got three great things and you've just done A E I. Uh huh. What? No. Uh. And that's about it. And then you go home. And you, you know, and you receive thousands of dollars in the mail for this. Quiet gas. I want to go up with it. Sorry. Yeah. There's actually the running gag in this business of. Can you give me a? Yeah, give, give me the uh, anime reaction 101, which is. Uh. <laughs> Have any of the other actors talked about the 102? <laughs> which can be used as an all-purpose sound. It can be used for like a quiet surprise gasp, or it can be used for terror, <laughs> or it can be used for, I don't know, like exerting. <clears throat> Disco Inferno. And for some reason, you can't seem to move an anime without having some sort of physical uh, noise that comes with it. For instance, <sighs> And there's a little, you know, on the script, there's a little symbol for all that. You know, closed mouth, C-M, reacts, R-E-A-X. Open mouth, O-M. It's almost comical because we'll just see line, 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 line. It says, reacts, 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 reacts. Huh? 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 Wait, that was too big. You were able to convey so much with a, hmm? Fight reactions, especially on an action show like Naruto, you can't get too physical in the booth because the mic will pick up the noise of you shuffling around, the sound of your clothes and everything. Oh, I just cut a button, sorry. You just have to add the, you know, some sort of, If you imagine, you know, stand in your room and scream at the top of your lungs, you know, your voice is going to be a little shaky, to say the least. <laughs> That's genius. It's important to listen to, to the voice as it was originally recorded. I think it can reflect a lot more of what you do in the interpretation. <laughs> So that's, ooh, that's fast, okay. So we watched in Japanese once, or however many times you need to see it. But so you'll get three beeps, you know, beep, 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 and then you're supposed to go on the fourth beep. So it's the fourth imaginary beep, right? Yes, sir. Oh, I kept, I kept going on the fifth one. Can't believe this is my first time doing this. You guys are so cool for letting me do this. Yeah. If it's a short enough line, I'll do it from memory. You know, I'll get my three beeps, and when it's when it's my time to record, I'll do it to the picture. If it's a paragraph, you know, obviously you can't memorize that right away. Die out, fade away, hearing all that, my resolve is stronger than ever before. Nothing. I'm so sorry. That's great. We're gonna slide and use. And really? Slide. Yes. Really. First lines. First little bit. I don't, I have no idea what I'm doing in here. Well, yeah. Line. Line. That's why they have computers and um, good engineers that cut things and can slide it. So if you were too late coming in after the hitch, they can move it back six frames, eight frames. So they can fix a lot of things, you know, on the other side of the glass. Can we do that, Dave? Ladies and gentlemen, David Barr.
The engineers are the most important, I think, because they can make a borderline take sound brilliant. And so I pretty much owe my career to, to David. There's plenty of outtake uh, blackmail footage out there that the engineers have hard drives full of to, uh, you know, point and laugh at us. <laughs> We've gotten it all before. Wiggle, wiggle, scratch. Put the needle on the record. <laughs> and the drum beat goes like this. <laughs> A lot of fun stuff happens in the session. Um, you can really see the rapport between Mary Elizabeth and the actors. Um, she's a really great voice director, and she can pull these great performances out of the actors. Well, we're lucky to have Mary Elizabeth uh, do, doing the voice direction on both the television series and this movie. She's not only the voice director of the project, she is a, she's a big fan of Naruto. So she knows the characters, she knows the history of the characters, she knows where the characters need to go to tell this story. Naruto, do something! Uh. Good. Okay, that, that's a good straight read. Can you give us a little more like, do something! Sure, sure. Yep, we're all gonna die here. Uh. Naruto, do something! Suggestions from the peanut gallery. What do you think? She, you know, has basically the entire project in her mind as to what's going on, and she's able to convey that to you very quickly. And she has a great way of getting it out of my voice without her going, No, idiot. Say it like this. Goodbye. Uh, uh, hey, hold on! Wait up, will ya? <laughs> Timing was really brilliant. Let's try it again just for fun. Mary Elizabeth is an amazing director. Mary Elizabeth is great to work with. Mary Elizabeth is a wonderful director. Mary Elizabeth is a horrible person and we have horrible rapport. She's just a joy. She's the best director I've ever worked with. Bar none. I pay them a lot of money to say those things. Great directing. There's a small group in LA of actors, uh, of really talented actors, that do this really, really well and uh, I try and surround myself with them as much as possible because this could be an arduous process without it. I, I don't know how I landed into this, but I did. not I'm going to try to stay in it as long as possible because really it's, it's like a blessing. It's the best thing in the world. I just feel really fortunate to be in uh, this uh, tight-knit community of actors. So it's exciting kind of learning as I go and learning from such huge names and being a part of, you know, a great ensemble cast of people that, you know, know what they're doing. That's what we call being what? Van Gogh. That's called a Van Gogh. <laughs> Today, Miley learned how to put on a set of headphones without taking off half of her head. <laughs> All right. It's great to know that for as much fun as we're having, working on it in the booth and I'm writing it and Mary's directing it, that there are people out there, you know, look, watching it. Just to help bring these awesome stories to the U.S. It's, I just feel really lucky to be able to work on this project. I know there's more movies on the rise in those games. It's like a never-ending conveyor belt of ninja, ninja magic coming down. So I'll be writing this till probably till about 73. I'm Naruto's Maki, and I'm a Rasengan believe it, and I love Ramen. And this is why Miley gets the big bucks, kids. Hey, it's Miley and I play Naruto Uzumaki. Believe it! Believe it! <laughs> Rasengan! Here's Kahiko doing a Naruto impression. <laughs> Believe it! <laughs> so I'm a Kankuro doing Naruto. Believe it. That would be, uh... <clears throat> Believe it. Oh. Believe it. Oh, believe it. Gosh, that's harder than I thought it would be. It kills the throat. Believe it. Oh man, I can't. I mean, I can't. I can't give a good Naruto impersonation. I don't want to have anybody lose their job over it. <laughs> oh no. If I could, I would. But I'm not even supposed to be here. Hey guys, I'm Naruto, and I'm spunky! Sorry, Miley, that really stuck. It's like, Sakura, you're amazing! That's probably not that good. Believe it! 
believe it! I don't know. If I had to do that all day, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> That's tough. I think my voice sounds like everybody's voice. Shadow clone jutsu. <laughs> Give up. Believe it! How's that? 